I make a pickle which is quite unique. I make a mango and balsamic vinegar and jaggery, you know, which is not normally made and certainly you can't find it in the market. So if my mother says uh, that the pickle is uh, uh, okay, passable, it means it's very good. And if she says it's good, it means it's outstanding. I'm not, you know, looking at the commercial side of it at all. For me, it's creativity. It's, it's creation that matters. My own take on the issue is that governments are normally responsible and uh, because they're accountable to the people. So I would, you know, really think several times before accusing any government of being irresponsible on these issues. Pakistan inspired, uh, inspired uh, killing of individual targets is actually, if you ask me, a reflection of the frustration that uh, the so-called, uh, you know, uh, separatists are feeling. I have friends across in both parties and for me, it's uh, I work for the government and within the constitution of India. Hello and welcome to HD's weekly talk show, The Interview. The pickly taste of Dada, a retired bureaucrat's venture. From being in key positions in the government to making pickles. Yes, this is Rajiv Meherishi's journey. The country's erstwhile home and finance secretary and controller and auditor general of India. He has put his retirement to good use. When his mother told him that cooking is not for men, little did she know that her son would start making pickles instead. Rajiv Meherishi, the bureaucrat turned pickle maker in this edition of HT's weekly talk show, The Interview. Welcome to the show, Mr. Rajiv Meherishi, and thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Kumkumji. Thank you for having me. My first question, from bureaucracy to pickles, how, why, and when? No, this has been a hobby with me for decades now. I've been doing this for over 30 years. So I used to make pickles for home. And uh, then about two, three years back, my daughter-in-law thought they were good enough to be marketed. So she started in a small way, like a cottage industry. So I am the, well, I am the chef, so to speak. Yeah. It's her business. So, so I still make them primarily for home, but then whatever extra uh, she, there's some always some extra, and that can be marketed by her. The brand name being Pickly, the taste of Dada. Yes. Unusual name. Well, I guess Pickly comes from pickle and taste of Dada because the LLP she registered for the business is called Shaurya uh, Pickles and Masalas. And Shaurya is my grandson. So in a sense, uh, she was referring to Shaurya and Shaurya's company. He's two and a half years old, so he doesn't know what's going on. So uh, taste of Dada is uh, because of keeping Shaurya in mind. That's how the name evolved. You said that you make pickles for the home and then whatever is left is marketed. Don't you think it should be the other way around? that you make them for the market and whatever is left is consumed at home. I'm not really a professional in that sense. So yes, of course, it is happening naturally a little bit because the quantities now required to be made are larger than for home only. So she has even hired a room, uh, especially for me to go and, you know, sort of put the pickles together. But uh, basically it is becoming a cottage industry of sorts and uh, ultimately my intention is to also, uh, you know, uh, pass on the recipes to them so they can continue doing what they want to do after, uh, you know, I am too old or gone. Your mother told you cooking is not a man's job. You not only proved her wrong, but went a step ahead and made pickles. <laughs> well, my mother is so, well, you know, you can imagine, she is 90 now, so she is from a different generation. And uh, of course, uh, that doesn't mean that she didn't have a role to play. She had a huge role to play because the pickles I'm making are actually, in a sense, all her pickles. Well, that's where I picked up the taste from. And uh, of course, uh, I got no practice at home. So I had to work on these recipes myself. 
but from time to time i would ask her that uh, does does this pickle require this masala or that masala and she would guide me once in a while she would respond to me so uh, she didn't like you know she she used to manage the kitchen herself so she didn't like men going into her kitchen that was her, that was her area take me through the taste journey pickles that she made pickles that you made initially and what you are marketing now so i think they remain consistent because i am the only person who makes them i got them very close to my uh, mother's uh, taste you know because i would make them and sometimes and take them back home to for my mother to taste in jaipur pickles are now very similar to what she used to make and and in fact very close to what my nani used to make so those childhood memories also i have been able to uh, sort of uh, rekindle for example you know i make a pickle which is quite unique i make a mango and balsamic vinegar and jaggery you know which is not normally made and certainly you can't find it in the market so that's a, a recipe from my nani's house basically what was your mother's reaction when you took the first pickle you had made to her was it shock and a kind of oh god my son a pickle maker no she was quite sporting about it and uh, you know and she was very skeptical about the quality but once she tasted it she uh, you know found that i was okay i was not you know that i was able to produce good pickles she still didn't want me to make them she tastes all my pickles you know she eats all of them now and now she is reconciled to the fact that i do make pickles for everybody so from the first pickle that she tasted to now where you've come a long way how has she assessed your pickles from okay to good to very good or no so if my mother says uh, that the pickle is uh, uh, okay passable it means it's very good and if she says it's good it means it's outstanding how many times has she given you a good <laughs> Ah, for dozen times, I think in thirty years. <laughs> Rajiv Maharishi, former finance secretary, former home secretary, former CAG of India, and pickle maker. Which of these titles or positions do you hold close to your heart and with pride? And please don't say all of them. Pickle making is a hobby. The other positions were jobs, so they're not really comparable in that sense. Finance and home are such different jobs. that you know comparison is really very very difficult finance is all about you know uh, policy and creating new things and you know uh, uh, making economic policy and home is more about control and regulation and preventing trouble you know and uh, so the the angles are completely different i would not like to compare a hobby with a job you know that's not a fair comparison really Yes, but it's no longer a hobby because you are now marketing and getting into a business venture. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I still look upon it as a bit of a stress buster, ma'am. So I, 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 I can't. You know, I have no commercial mind for these things. So I really don't know. Frankly, if you ask me what they sell for, I don't know. Okay, let me try and put this differently. Of the two Bs, a bureaucrat and a businessman, which is the title you would hold close to your heart? I am not a businessman at all. I am a bureaucrat through and through. From a pastime to a successful business model, how did that happen, and how did you see that transition? And just take me through that, you know. So, Kumkum, as I said, that it's very informal as far as I am concerned because uh, I don't look at the business side at all, you know. And as a matter of fact, I keep telling Asta, that's my daughter-in-law, if you look. Uh, you are putting me at a loss, but very often I'll buy oil or balsamic vinegar from my, you know, my funds, and then, you know, there is no no real, you know, accounting for that. So basically, I I'm not, you know, looking at the commercial side of it at all. For me, it's creativity. It's it's creation that matters. Jackfruit, for example, initially when I was making jackfruit pickle, all the jackfruit came from the tree in our house in Jaipur. So it's experimentation. It's creativity. It's just the interest of making it. is the satisfaction of then tasting it and finding that you've got the ingredients right so i don't have a written recipe for anything and if you ask me how much salt has gone into how much mango etc i really don't know it's a god given gift i wo kehte hain hindi mein andaaz se sab andaaz se karta hu and some of the andaaz always turns out to be right 
while on jack fruit pickle i am told it's a favorite of well known people including amitabh ka so it's probably because it's a rarer pickle you know uh, half of india eats jack fruit as a fruit not as a vegetable how many people in government including ministers have tried your pickle has uh, union minister <laughs> nirmala sitaraman tried them because she herself is a pickle maker and she used to take when she told me once she used to take leave and go home to make pickles <laughs> she, i can only say that she makes rather good pickles you know uh, and uh, so yeah but actually anybody who's come in touch with me i've tried to sort of uh, you know make them taste uh, the pickles that i sort of make but it's you know if i remember if it was it was not a foremost agenda it was just you know uh, a by the way agenda that i would sometimes offer them pickle that i had made you won't give me the names of well known people who tried your pickle <laughs> no everybody i said everybody who i come in contact with you see the problem in giving pickles is very strange kumkum the problem is the pickle is not the problem problem is finding the bottles so <laughs> you know <laughs> where do you get bottles from and if you start buying bottles and gifting them you you, you know it really starts hurting <laughs> so that's <laughs> okay which means that if we want to try your pickle we should get our own bottle <laughs> yeah bring your own bottle kind of thing yeah <laughs> what is the usp of your pickles and i'm told you have over 20 varieties yeah i have about 25 uh, usps are that i use Uh, all high quality ingredients so i told you about balsamic vinegar which is expensive i i use only kachi ghani mustard oil uh, brought from a specific place in bharatpur which is my hometown uh, and uh, i have a machine at home which grounds masalas so i don't buy any ground masala i buy all masalas uh, sabut so to speak and then we grind them at home so basically uh, uh, the ingredients are guaranteed of to be of high quality and i am not a chili eater so my my pickles don't have chili so if people are looking for a chili taste then really speaking uh, they will be disappointed i thought you did make chili pickle yeah but that chili pickle if you eat it's it's you know as i said it's got the chili flavor and it's got the taste of the masalas but the sharpness is gone because i removed the seeds and i use only the thick uh, thick chili so sharpness more or less is gone it'll be very mildly sharp how tough is it to get the pickle right what does it take as i said god has been kind to me kumkum so you know i don't find it difficult at all i for me it's actually uh, quite simple and easy so uh, uh, you know it's just it, you just have to ha i guess have it in you you know in some way or the other i haven't read a recipe book till date what have been the disaster moments actually uh, you know uh, impatience is uh, you know because i used to be short of time so at times i would take some you know shortcuts and that would lead to some hardening of the nebu or something going wrong but very rare which is the highly recommended rajiv meherishi pickle so i would say that the balsamic vinegar one uh, with uh, jaggery uh, and mango that's something which is very unique then i make another one which uh, is uh, what the what we call kishmish shwara so that's got you know raisins it's got dried dates it's got uh, ginger so uh, that uh, was also a unique and separate pickle you just told me that you coat uncoat guess the quantities of ingredients isn't that a tall order ma'am how do i put it it's just you know something that uh, you know get in born in me is genetically wired into me is god given to me i really don't know speaking about your wife who's also a bureaucrat does she share your interest She says she's unlucky. Whenever she's tried, the pickles have gone bad. The troubled times that we are going through. I'm tempted to ask you about your tenure as Union Home Secretary, wherein an aggressive approach on internal security was adopted. Do you think that is the answer now, be it in the communal unrest or the situation in Kashmir today? For every situation, you have to take a call on how much. you know what you have to do and how much you, how much you have to do 
and every situation is different there is no copy book rule for that so people on the on the field actually take that approach more than anybody else how do you view the bulldozer politics which is now taking shape in the country i really don't know what whether it's, it's right to even call it bulldozer politics I, if you have illegal uh, how illegal sort of constructions or encroachments then uh, on the one hand you know government is always criticized for not bringing down encroachments i take your point when you say if it is illegal and if it's it is encroachment it should be probably brought down but here what's happening and what has happened in the recent past then those who have a uh, triggered communal unrest their houses are being raised to the ground my own take on the issue is that governments are normally responsible and uh, because they are accountable to the people so i would you know really think several times before accusing any government of being irresponsible on these issues what about the situation in kashmir how do you look at it particularly because as union home secretary you have you know sort of seen it unfold pakistan inspired uh, inspired uh, killing of individual targets is actually if you ask me a reflection of the frustration that uh, the so called uh, you know uh, separatists are feeling what about the government's handling of it is it how you would have handled the situation absolutely i i i think they are absolute they are handling it absolutely correctly and uh, with the right uh, right amount of uh, you know uh, sagacity and thought but don't you think the policy of the anti national forces or pakistan as you say has succeeded because kashmiri pandits no longer want to live there and they are leaving the valley which is exactly what yeah, had happened so it's a, yeah it's a serious issue so there is uh, there has been ethnic cleansing cleansing in kashmir uh, by uh, by by these elements terrorists and it's unfortunate population of kashmiri pandits is so small that uh, uh it was possible to target them and uh, make them leave out of fear before i let you go let me ask you your pat on the back to the government has it something to do with your allegiance to the ruling party or the fact that some of your family members had linkages with the rss or the erstwhile leaders of the bjp i have friends across in both parties and for me it's Uh, I work for the government and within the constitution of India. Any linkages of your family with the RSS? I am not aware directly, but there must be some people. I am sure. I mean, it's not very. I mean, there is nobody who is really high up or something. There may be cousins, but I really don't keep track so much. So maybe. Mr. Rajiv Bhairishi, thank you very much. Thank you for your time and thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Kumkum. Kum.